So I'm Juliet, and I'm from Viva. I founded Viva 21 years ago now. Um, in that time, I've been inside many different factory farms, and as you saw for a little bit on that film, we've launched a campaign called Face Off. The aim of that film is to show people what the reality is in a typical factory farm, not aberrant ones, not the extreme examples, but the big boys, the ones who are doing this as the norm. So that is what we have deliberately targeted in terms of our filming, and that's what we're showing the public across the UK. And what happens again and again is that people say that simply cannot be legal in the UK. Can it? Everything you saw on that film is legal. And we complained to the Animal Health Agency about every single farm that we've visited, whether it be pigs, whether it be caged hens, and so forth. In most instances, the response that we get is no response. Actually, farmed animals have almost zero protection in the UK, and the government spins the line over and over, and you'll read it in the media, you'll read it online, that Britain has the best animal welfare standards in the entire world. It is complete and utter nonsense. And believe me, one of the reasons we came to launching the Face Off campaign is because it is up to us to change ourselves and to change everyone around us. You cannot rely on the government to do anything because they protect this industry. And more than that, there are many vets who conspire to keep this industry going. So it's almost impossible to get vets to speak out against it. So what I'm going to talk about now is um, a little bit about the work that I've been doing and how it relates to this film, Swine, um, why the issue is of such urgent importance for you to spread the word. It's something else in your armory. I'm guessing, how many of you here today are already vegan? <laughs> it's, a, it's something else in your armory to talk to other people about. Because I've found, in terms of talking to people of all ages, of all social backgrounds, that actually the prospect of running out of antibiotics to be able to treat you even when you cut yourself and something goes wrong is pretty damn scary to everybody. But do people that you know really understand how much that relates to the fact that they eat meat, dairy, and eggs? So let's have a little bit of a, a think about that. In terms of the pig farming, one of the reasons we concentrated on pigs in this film with relation to drug use is because factory farming in Britain is getting worse. It sounds odd, because you think we're progressing as a nation in so many ways, and we are. You've got two things running side by side in Britain. On the one hand, veganism is exploding, and on the other hand, intensive farming by the day is getting more intensive. And ironically, organic free-range sales are going down. But what is happening is people are jumping straight to cutting it out of their diet all together. So it sounds contradictory. You've got more intensive farming, you've got more vegans, but it's not actually when you think about it, because this industry, this is the way it operates, this is the way it runs. So as time goes by, so they're going to try and intensify, because that's all they know. So the kind of farms that we went into with drug use in Britain, it mentioned it on the film, but just let me stress this when you talk to other people, over half of pharmaceutical industry drugs that are called antibiotics there to fight bacteria, over half of them are used in farmed animals, not people. And this is just the UK. You take this and replicate this all over the world. In the UK, 10 million pigs are killed every year. That's a shocking figure. It's shameful, but I have to say, just so you're aware of this, since Viva's been campaigning with major campaigns like Pig in Hell, pig consumption has gone down year on year on year, and so it continues to go down in Britain. So things are changing. But we have to be realistic, and you look globally, you look at China, we kill 10 million in the UK, they kill 500 million pigs a year. And there are no, almost no legislation whatsoever for antibiotic usage. That makes it sound like Britain's better and Europe's better. Europe, remember that? It's uh, the EU. Well, 
Um, we banned, as the EU, well, I don't know what's going to happen when we come out, but in the EU, um, growth-promoting antibiotics were actually banned. And that was back in 2006. So that's 10 years ago now. So you'd think this problem had got less and less, because that was where most drugs were being used, was to make the animals grow faster. Why? Obviously, to get them to slaughter quicker, so that the farmers make more money. What has happened in the last 10 years is antibiotic usage has gone up and up and up. So how can that be? This is what you're dealing with, and this is why I say it's down to you and you persuading people to change, using, obviously, information from organizations like Viva to help people change. Why? Because they lie. Because at every turn, all that comes first, you think, do they actually care about the future at all? All that comes first is profit, is money. And why do I say that? Because since we've banned growth-promoting drugs throughout the EU, including the UK, what they've done is said, OK, we'll just get antibiotics on the basis that we'll pretend we're trying to prevent disease. So they use all the same antibiotics, only even more of them, under a different label. And that's how cynical this industry is. And yet, we're in real danger of the potency of antibiotics running out completely. So why do we need them? I hope the film made it really, really obvious. It's because those animals are kept in conditions like that. So that's the norm. I want to stress that. All that footage you saw, by the way, because I've had this asked, it was all the UK. Almost every bit of it was taken by Viva. So I know, because I was there in a lot of those farms, it is all the UK, and it's just typical. So if you keep animals stressed, and you keep animals in filthy conditions, obviously, bacteria can spread. So if you're wondering why so many antibiotics, it's because of that. It's because bacteria spread very rapidly indeed, but also because by giving them these drugs, antibiotics have the side effect, if you like, of making pigs grow more quickly. So that's why they're so widely used. So the United Nations have said, we're on the road, and I quote, we're on the road back to the days of people dying from common infections and injuries. And I spoke to a surgeon very recently this year, and he was saying, listen, Juliet, we won't be able to do things like hip operations, or if you do, you'll just have to get people to sign away that they're likely to die during the operation. Because these operations where you have major cuts within the, you know, major wounds that you're inflicting, um, it's going to be extremely hard to do those operations without antibiotics because people going in for those operations are given antibiotics before they go in to kill bacteria, then they're given them after the operation to stop infection. So it's going to be extremely difficult to do things that you, your generation and my generation, take completely for granted. So they're on the way out. In terms of um, is there any chance... Um, the antibiotic scientists within the antibiotics um, research sphere have said that now, in 2016, there's about a 50-50 chance of saving important antibiotics. But that's only if we stop agriculture, as they put it, from ruining it. So, yeah, we're, we really are on the cusp. So every time we take an antibiotic, you put pressure on those bacteria, selective pressure on them to mutate, to change, to become resistant to that drug. And this is why you're told when you take antibiotics to always finish the course. Because before you finish the course, you feel better, so the temptation is to stop. But don't ever do that, because what you're leaving behind are the strong bacteria who've changed. And then they, you only need to leave one behind, they will replicate, but worse than that, they can pass on that mutation or that resistance to other species of bacteria within you. Um, and that's one of the reasons that we're in the mess we're in, and the other one is giving far too many to farmed animals such that how then do we get that resistance? Let me just make this clear, actually. One thing I get asked over and over is, hang on a minute, when animals are killed, you have to withdraw drug use for a set amount of time so that we're not consuming those drugs. And that is true in the UK. This is not what that film is talking about. What we're talking about is throughout their, their lives, because pigs and chickens are so diseased, they are given drugs practically from the day they're born, practically through to slaughter. Yes, it's withdrawn before they're slaughtered. So what we're talking about here is bacteria, bugs within them, becoming resistant to those drugs, and then you consume 
tuning those resistant bugs. But worse than that, you can pass on those bugs to other people, person to person to person. So the major way that those um, bugs are passed around is through consuming, guess what, meat, eggs, and dairy. Meat in every sphere, but especially pig meat, whatever that may be, and especially chicken meat, but also beef. So just about everything that meat eaters consume, eggs and dairy as well. So you can see now why I say there's another reason to tell people to go vegan. So obviously I'm not talking about every resistant bug, mainly I'm talking about Campylobacter and Salmonella. Farm antibiotic use is the main cause of resistance in those. E. coli, you'll have all heard of that as well. Um, but also MRSA, which the film mentioned. The other thing is that once those bugs get inside you, so say somebody you know eats pig meat with a resistant bug inside them, what happens is it harbors within their intestines, and you've got, as you know, millions and millions and millions of bugs inside your intestines, and what it can do then is pass on the resistance from being within that pig, it's developed resistance because the pig's given too many drugs, it's then inside the meat eater, they then pass on that resistance to other bugs within the person that's eaten them. And that's okay when they're well, but what happens if something goes wrong and those bugs get into another part of you, like a urinary tract infection? In India now, they can barely treat urinary tract infections. They've become killers because of this antibiotic resistance. So that's what's happening. So with MRSA, let me explain quickly what it is. Everybody's heard of MRSA, I'm sure you all have. It stands for Methicillin Resistant Staphylococcus Aureus. There's a mouthful for you. Methicillin, what is that? It's just a semi-synthetic form of penicillin, you've all heard of that. So what it's saying is, this bacteria, Staphylococcus Aureus, that has become resistant to the whole penicillin family of antibiotics and other drugs as well. Staphylococcus Aureus, what's that? It's a type of bug. The reason that we mention it a lot is because it's in a third of you in this room now. You will have S. aureus on your skin, you'll have it up your nose, and in various places, but it's okay, don't worry. <laughs> it's a natural part of you, and it's not going to do you any harm unless things go wrong. So, Staph aureus, it causes things like boils, pimples, impetigo, abscesses. These are not really exactly very serious things. But what's happened is, that throughout Europe, and this was um, discovered only about 10, 11 years ago, in Holland, they found that within pigs, Staph aureus, same bacteria in pigs, was becoming resistant to the antibiotics they were giving pigs for the reasons I've explained. Then, Staph aureus from the pigs was being transmitted to people. So within Holland, by about just a handful of years ago, over 40% of cases of MRSA were due to consuming pigs. So this became a very, very serious European issue. And now it's moving across the world very, very fast. Other strains are developing, and it's come now to the UK. So why does it matter? If I just said MRSA is naturally on your skin, why does it matter? It matters because for things like hospitals again, why do we hear about MRSA in hospitals? You think about it. In hospital, people are having operations, obviously. If you've got a resistant strain to penicillin of a bug that naturally lives on your skin, and it gets inside a wound because somebody's had an operation, that bloody bug is really hardy. It can last on mop heads for weeks, it can last on the towels, on the bed sheets in the hospital, on razor blades, even on taps, on door handles. It's very hardy, so you get a resistant strain of MRSA in a hospital, you're in trouble. Um, my mum, I'll just give you one example, she had skin cancer on her leg and had to have a piece of skin moved from her thigh to where the cancer was. Um, she got MRSA straight after it. I'm sure you all have got, just start, talk, start talking to people about this, and it's one of those diseases, I'm afraid, like cancer, you'll find somebody that you know has suffered it. So what happens if MRSA gets in you? You can get blood poisoning, septicemia, lung infections, bone infections, heart infections, bladder infections that you simply cannot treat with anything. So that's why it matters, and that's why pig farming and this whole development of MRSA is so extremely serious, because it's now spreading across the world like wildfire. 
I'm just going to mention one other thing. It sounds terribly um, biological, but this talk is a bit that way, isn't it? The last line antibiotic, so we're running out of antibiotics across the world. The last line antibiotic is called Colliston. It was mentioned in there. You know what? The last pig farm that I filmed on, which is just this summer, um, is in Gloucestershire. Guess what I found when we were filming? Colliston there in this dirty shithole of a place. Um, you know, syringes just in like these washing up buckets and the drugs just there, just the routine part of this pig farm. And there it was, Colliston. It's not even been outlawed to use it in pigs here or in other countries like China where it's used in the, the, en masse to hundreds and thousands and millions of animals. Colliston is now used because it makes them grow faster. So why is it a last line defense? The only reason it's last line defense in people is because it makes us really ill when they give us that antibiotic. It affects our nervous system, it attacks our kidneys. So they put it away somewhere else. We won't use colostin on people. It actually has really nasty side effects. That's the only reason that it's still effective is because we haven't used it very much. Now it's one of the very last defenses we have against bacterial infections. So they're now using it across the world en masse. India, China, the UK, the rest of the EU. Why is that a problem? Well, little E. coli, remember that one? You've all heard of it. It's developed a gene called MCR1, and that gene actually makes it completely resistant to colostin. So this was only discovered one year ago, so I'm talking very recent stuff in China. So in China, they then, because they were so scared, oh my God, where do we go from here? We haven't got even colostin left as last line defense. That means you just die of whatever you get. So they tested 523 samples of pork and chicken. It was in 15% already. 804 pigs in slaughterhouses. It was in over, over um, a quarter, 21%. And it was in 1% of hospital patients. Um, so this is directly from giving antibiotics to farm animals has caused this to happen. And the problem with the MCR1 gene is it's loose in a little plasmid. So when you eat the E. coli, it just passes on this MCR1 gene to other bacteria within your gut. It just hops, literally, species to species to species. So it's massive news, and this is why scientists the world over are really scared. I've never heard language, actually, on almost any subject. Scientists and seem to be naturally very conservative with a small c. I've never heard them talk in a language the way that they do about antibiotic misuse and resistance in terms of actually heading straight into catastrophe is the word they use. And believe me, scientists don't say that very easily. So rounding up, um, what we have shown you today, what happens in farms, it is coming back to bite us on the bum big time. Those antibiotics, they won't work on factory farms anymore either because they're becoming... So factory farming is going to collapse one way or another because simply it, it, it is unfeasible that it can continue. What's the government doing about it? Well, on the one hand, you know, we did have Cameron when he was in saying, let's do this review. The review found that these drugs need to be made illegal for farmed animals immediately. What has happened? Absolutely bloody nothing. It is still used en masse across farms in the UK. So industry, yet again, wins out. You would think they didn't have their own children or grandchildren, wouldn't you? Because you can see where we're heading. Veganism is actually the only answer that where we have the power to take things back into our own hands. You know what? We're on a tipping point. I hope you all believe this too. I know this is all sounding very sort of, you know, um, doom and gloom. But at the same time, things are changing massively in the UK, and not just the UK, it's spreading across the world. In Toronto, they had a vegetarian festival where they had about 20,000 people turn up. So things are changing. Things are really, really, really changing. And I think we're getting close to that tipping point where people like yourselves have just had enough. And you will spread the word and spread the word and spread the word, and people are finally getting it. They're understanding that the only way forward for this planet to continue, certainly with us on it anyway, is for the whole of the human species to go vegan. So from every angle, to protect those animals from these hell holes, to stop them being killed because it's simply immoral, for our health, for the sake of our children, our grandchildren, for the sake of the whole planet, thank you so much for going vegan and for being part of this fantastic 
movement that is brilliant beyond words. Thank you so much.